Hello fish lovers, welcome to Sax Tags, yet again, another long video. And this video needs some explanation in the beginning actually. I was going to do a uh, Sax Swim Tales, but then I realized if I film five more tanks now, or six, um, I have a complete fish room tour. And that was a long time ago. I don't think any tank looks the same as they did back then and I have new tanks and I've teared down tanks so well it's time for a new fish room tour but still I started out uh, doing a sax swim tails so I'm gonna do a mashup so this is a swag sax swim tails uh, and you see some of my tanks and then halfway through uh, halfway through you're gonna start to see tags in a short explanation and just to get a good look at it. So it's gonna be Sax Windtails mashup with a fish room tour or all aquarium update. So if you want to see all my aquariums, stay tuned. And okay, not all of my aquariums. One aquarium I'm not showing, and that is the discus tank because I have started to take everything out and it's only fish in there, two caves, all the plecos are hiding in them and I only have three discus now, so not, smart, not much to show. And besides that, we are going to do an aquascaping video and we're gonna reveal what we're gonna keep in there and other stuff uh, in, in future videos so I'm not gonna film that tank for this video but everything else in my apartment is filmed and updated on so sex swim tails goes fish room tour all aquarium update hopefully you will enjoy it thanks for stopping by fish lovers always Nice to see your comments in the section below. Fish lovers, let's see what we got in this weird bag. This stuff always takes like four weeks for me to get. Whoa, this was really effed up. Hopefully it's still working. Oh. Yeah. So, it's the same one that I always brag about. Not brag about, but talk about how good it is. It's the, I have two of them on the 75 gallon cube. And it's a two foot light. But the new thing with this one is that this is red, blue and green. And since the other one has been so good for me, I wanted to try the red, blue and green. And we're gonna try it on that tank. Because we're gonna take the dwarf paragraphs from the discus tank and put them in there. And then we need a good light. Not that cheap LED light. Looks good. <laughs> right now but it's not good the moss would be really light green color if they if it gets a light like this so we're gonna try that and probably feeding Miss Sunshine that's the name yep choose the name now I love sunshine so and it's really good because she has a yellow belly so we're gonna feed Miss Sunshine and we're gonna plant some dwarf hair grass and put that light on there and take a look at it. So we have a lot of things to do, so stay tuned. So this tank looks great again. And it's ready for the Dragon Puffer. Look, looks a lot better now. 12 days of cleanup crew. So I'm gonna move the Dragon Puffer into here. I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I have a long video when I show you how I moved the Faka Puffer and it's the same same way I moved the Dragon Puffer. 
you put something in the water and then move the net behind him or her so they can go into the bucket and you don't have to lift them out of the water so yep yep dragon puffer is going back sorry for these guys but that's fish life sometimes so even though it's the same apartment and pretty much the same water I'm gonna acclimate the little guy a little bit so he doesn't get stressed too much puffers are really strong so he could easily just move to the tank but why not <laughs> the weirdest thing about them is that they are really heavy for their size I mean a fish like this it's not that big but it's really heavy <laughs> I feel that when I push him in with the net and then take out the bucket it's really heavy so I acclimate him like this and then we're gonna put him in so the dragon puffer has gotten used to his old home again we're gonna put him in I'm gonna let him swim out of this. And he's not very stressed. It's not breathing heavily or anything. So that's a good sign. But it's enough stress not to start hunting the fish right away. Yeah, but it's been happy in here, so it's gonna work itself out. Sorry, I don't know what happened. It's starting to move. Yep. He's going back to his old nook. Likes to hang out underneath the subwasser tank. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> hard to see him in there. But that went good. So now we have the dragon puffer in his tank again. And if you watched uh, Corey at Aquarium Co-op's puffer fish talk, this is one of those puffers you shouldn't get if you really want a personal puffer. He only comes out to hunt fish sometimes and otherwise he's just hanging out. That's why they don't need as much food as Amazon puffers or dwarf puffers who always swims around. Same with my Faka puffer. He doesn't swim around all the time but he's not hiding like the Harry puffer or this dragon puffer. So till the next bit guys. I am doing a uh Every fifth, every sixth, is sometimes I went a week, but usually I don't. Uh, to do my 90% water change in the turtle tank. And I said it before, but I can say it again because it's been a while. They are a little bit spooked by now. I always put a lot of food. This is a Sierra Well ships. So the turtles will stay down and eat those and not attack the fish when the water gets low because they still would love to eat them and their only ch shot at doing that is probably when I'm doing a 90% water change and but I had something else in mind while I did that it was a perfect opportunity to catch a mono shrimp I don't know if you ha have owned a mono shrimp in a <laughs> big aquarium it's pretty much impossible to take them but now they were also freaking out by, by the low water 
So they were just swimming around, so I could just wait with the net until they were swimming close by. But when the tank is super deep, they are like ninjas. They are like ninjas, and they can escape anything. Uh, so <laughs> it was perfect opportunity, and I need those for another tank. I'm going to show you in which tank I'm going to put them. So the only time you can even catch these guys is when the water is very low because they're gonna run around. Literally it looks like they are running. Because other shrimp move backwards and crayfish also move backwards when they swim. So you have to think, you have to think in opposite direction and they swim in small fast movements. But these guys literally run around <laughs> on the substrate when the water gets low because they looking for an escape they are super smart shrimp and I really like them you can see how one is almost fully grown that one the other ones are smaller but I actually wound up with uh, eight and the biggest one has a weird color and they have those colors sometimes but it's not it's very rare at least since I owned and bought hundred of them never seen one like this I'm not talking about that she's carrying eggs I mean that she's black blue blackish color it's supposed to look like this so, and I'm gonna keep them in this tank. That's what I wanna show you. Whoa, come on out the focus. So I got the new light for this tank. I showed you that in the unboxing. And I put the last pieces of hair grass that I had from the discus tank. I could add more, but I will. we will see how well they are doing in here. But I think it's gonna do much better when you have the Shihiro's super strong light and that grit wood is gonna look awesome but since I'm only starting out with a lot of plants in this tank and I want them to grow in high light even though moss uh, and uh, dwarf hair grass needs CO2 I'm not gonna do CO2 of course so I need those eight little helpers to eat everything that's gonna come up and if, you, and if I have them in there from the beginning I, I don't think the algae is gonna be quick enough to start growing and I have something to feed in there to keep the cycle going of the filters so that's what I'm gonna do But I'm still changing the water at the turtles, so I'm gonna go back to that so I don't overflow the tank. <laughs> so here we have the tank that I <laughs> started because I found a space that is already taken, but I could use the stand to have something else and it's a lot of blue lights in this one maybe we're gonna turn it to we can turn them off individually so that's pretty cool so the tank and the plants are green um, I threw in seven Amono shrimps in here but they're gonna hide now in the beginning yeah they're hiding but this looks like crap now, but I promise you this will look awesome. Give it a month, maybe two months, and the hair grass is gonna fill in, and that bad boy is gonna look completely green with like 50% more growth to it, because it's a really good foundation of moss all over the branches. And if they get high light on that, it's going to turn out great. 
So, not much more to say about this tank. It's gonna look great in the future. Same with this tank. Still looks cool. Miss sunshine and everything, but it's gonna look awesome. Next bit, guys. Since someone asked me in the comment section of the last video that they didn't know how I kept the tank so clean with musk turtles, I can show you one trick you can do. Is a musk turtle tank is almost never gonna be filled up all the way. Then you're doing it totally wrong, of course, and they will escape. So, but if you don't have an over the tank top of the tank to basking spot of course you can build one yourself then you have a completely filled tank but otherwise when I do the water changes you saw me do a water change till about here and I will still fill the tank all the way up and then drain it down to the perfect level again so that's gonna give me even a bigger water change that I could have done in some other way so that's a trick. It sounds it sounds super simple, but I'm sure there are some of you guys out there that didn't think about it. It's always like that. The simplest ideas are the hardest to think about. So fill the tank all the way up to the top and then drain it down again. Then you get even cleaner water every water change. You can really appreciate how tall the tank is when it's completely filled up. Being an aquarium guy at first, <laughs> you really like the look of the tank like this. But these guys can eat small little creatures that started to thrive and live on the cork bark. And they always do when I fill it up. And they also spawn on this piece of cork bark when I fill it all the way up so you see you have a lot of advantages when you do this so this is something I can recommend so this aquarium is my rainbow tank Parkinsona rainbow Osmani rainbow rain, red irinia, irinian rainbow uh, turquoise, turquoise rainbows oh, I probably missed some and I have 13 rose line sharks and five bristle nose plecos but an awesome thing is that you can see some corridoras over there but I actually keep 60 corridoras in here so I need to feed this tank so you can really appreciate how many they are in here so that was Sierra Wells chips. Now we're gonna feed them tetramine flakes to the rainbows. And hopefully, if we don't move too much and scare them, we're gonna see a lot of the corridors. So here you have it guys, in the same video, fish go mad for flake food. If your fish goes mad on flake food, then you can start feeding them frozen foods. People start the other way around. If the store tells you this fish only eats frozen foods with blue rams and stuff like that, uh, you probably shouldn't buy that blue ram because it's going to be hard for you to get him used to anything else you guys not do you guys see oh it's hard to get this the entire tank in the picture at once but it's a lot of corridors love this feeding frenzy now we have flake food all over the tank now I have two FX6, 
two Fluval FX6 on this tank and a huge Potos plant growing on top of it and also a hang on back filter with some mangrovey trees but they are not trees yet so I call them seeds in a hang on back filter this tank is going really well as you can see on the corridoras Sorry about the glare guys, it's hard to turn every tank off in the apartment to make a video. I did that the last time when I did a feeding but this was improvised. So this is really heavily stocked but you heard of my filtration and I've shown you the poultice plant on top before. If not, look through my videos, my old videos. I have 150 or something now so I need to make this a little bit shorter so I can be able to fit all my tanks in one video without it being too long. And the plant on the rock there is not algae, it's <laughs> Christmas moss on a piece of driftwood. Munch away my friends. So I would say flake food is one of the best things to feed a tank like this. When you have fish in the middle, fish in the middle, fish on top and fish on the bottom. Flake food seven times a week and sinking food seven times a week of course. And then on top of that give like big chunks of rapashi to uh, the corridoras once a week so they really can put hours in eating and with the rainbows give them some frozen artemia I don't like bloodworms so I never feed that anymore and I can't see myself to start ever again actually with bloodworms but that's a different story over here we have the Sagittaria and we have Anubia Sapsilia and a big Microsorm in the corner and this is a 145 gallon tank if you haven't watched my videos before this is a really cool breeding fancy we're gonna go a bit closer four different kinds of corridoras and I got 60 because I wanted to experience an aquarium like this when you feed the whole bottom is filled with corridoras they are so cool in my opinion I still have the beautiful rainbows up top I'm gonna stop the video here because I'm gonna go to the next tank. And finally we have my small 17 gallon tank. Some cryptocorn plants. 3D background at least. And I use this tank to experiment and take out new endlers. That one looks really good. So I have wild endler females in here, usually, and put in a koi guppy, or a tiger endler, or a really small kind of guppy that I already sus suspect that it, it has endler blood in them, and try to breed them with uh, wild endler females to get new awesome 
varieties. This also needs to be turned down to see a little bit more. And I also keep Fukata rainbows and Threadfin rainbows. But I don't know. <laughs> this tank might go down. Actually. I'm not sure. Probably will take a while longer because I have so much other things to do now and if I just stick another plant in that spot, it's gonna look pretty good again. And of course I have a lot of velvet blue shrimps in here. Even though it's hard to see them. From dark brown background. At least the one in the back is dark. But I have a lot of them in here and I hate tearing down shrimp tanks because you never, <laughs> you never, you can never save them all. So you're gonna throw out 30, 40 shrimps. I hate doing that because I know that's what happens. They're too small, you can't get them anywhere. This, that inner filter is siliconed to that wall. So, to that side of the glass at least. And in there, there are probably so many blue velvet shrimp that I can't get. So we'll see. Thread pin rainbows are really cool. They are actually very aggressive against other males. At least it is 20 gallon. So, what do you guys think? We're gonna take that in another video. So this is a perfect example of fish that you should euthanize or feed to a bigger fish. This is an endler that's been deformed and for both the hobby and the quality of the fish in the future you need to take these out. And besides that, fish looking like this is not going to do well either way. That is the worst one, but there was actually five of them. The other ones are also pretty bad, but not as bad. But you will get this if you see through three, four hundred fries. Some of them will look like this. So I net them out from the Falca tank and the dragon puffer is gonna kill them and eat them and I know they're healthy so that's a good way to use them as feeder fish as well. And a little bit of frozen brine shrimp for the 138-gallon cryptocorn tank or cryptocorine. I have one Java fern over there in the background. But otherwise, it's all different kinds of cryptocorn. And I know I show this tank a lot, but this is one of my favorite tanks. And some guy asked me, or girl, I don't remember, but do you only feed frozen foods? And <laughs> of course not. I've talked about it a lot of times if you follow me for a while. That was probably 
a person who watched my feeding videos and why you want to feed them artemia when you do feeding videos it's because they're gonna pile up like this so it's easier for me to get a close-up of them it's gonna hunt the food but they are just as enthusiastic about flake food so I feed them tetra flake food every day also but artemia is great if you could afford to feed that every day I did it for a while all the really small guys gets a piece all the way down to the bottom a lot of small guys hiding in this bush and what Artemia does is it divides up to a million different small pieces so even the smallest fish can get one and I also have uh, a silver flying fox someone saw that one I always get the question after this video so now I can address it in the video it's an algae cleaner but it's a fully grown one what else do I have in here of course I have seven bristle nose plecos or bushy nose plecos ancestors for cleanup crew and I also have my L28 in here but I rarely see him but I wanted to give him a good home because I was tearing down his tank that he lived in and it was a 17 gallon so I thought it was nice of me to put him in a 138 gallon he acted the same way in the small tank so some plecos are like that and I have re really high light on this tank also so so we have some cryptocorn venti and some cryptocorn undulata spiralis tropica that's a mix actually and becketi petki crispatula i don't remember all the names right away but i have i think it's 10 different kinds of cryptocorn in here yeah but I always like showing this tank off because I really like it. It looks even better if I dim it down a little bit. Because it's so bright. And if you want to know what kind of lights I keep on it, I think I say it in every other video when I show this tank. So I'm not going to address that in this one. Just watch my other swim tails. One, two, or three. Or maybe even in all of them I really like those fishes that I keep in here they have the same agility and temperament against food they eat everything like crazy and that is always fun to have a tank with fish that are eating we're gonna see if they're gonna take flake food now because I've just fed them artemia so maybe not maybe they're full they usually attack the flake food just as well you see you pretty much have the same activity but the flake food is all around the tank so I definitely am not feeding them only frozen foods. I can't afford that. <laughs> but this is also a good food source. This is just regular. Oh, I dimmed the tank down. So, tetra, tetramine flakes. Really good food also to get one piece to everybody on the bottom. Because it's like a, the biggest fishes live on top and then they get smaller all the way down the tank. That's what I wanted. A high planted so I don't have to do all of those caves and structures to get a lot of fry. 
Now they can hide all over the tank and plants of course helps the tank with nitrates and ammonia and stuff like that. So planted African sickly tank, I always wanted one and now I have one. It's only gonna get better and better looking and the good thing about crypto corn and the reason why I wanted a crypto corn tank completely filled with just crypto corn plants it's because they grow so slow so I don't have to do maintenance because I want the plant to cover the whole bottom and they're gonna do that so first maintenance on this tank is gonna be in about three years and I've kept it now for 15 months or something so I don't have to trim plants because when you have a lot of aquariums like I do 14 right now I think you don't want to trim plants all the time so if you have fast growing plants I think that's the reason why a lot of the aquarists that have been in the hobby for a while start to like Anubias and uh, Microsorum and Cryptocorine because they grow super slow so your escapes stays the same a long time What do we need to do more in this video? I want to show you the shrimp tank in the kitchen because it was a long time ago and it actually looks pretty good. And of course we're gonna feed the fajaca. I already promised that in another bit I think, so I need to do that. So, off to the next bit people. Hope you still love my swim tails. And here we have the 30 gallon guppy tank but I also have four L15 plecos in here and probably 25 amano shrimps and two cool uh, loaches it's going good a lot of fry as you can see but I like to keep my guppy tanks blasted with fry and then up to the point where you get babies, new babies every day and then the tank is completely filled and then you take half of that out and sell it and leave half of them in and then you're gonna have a breeding for profit tank but don't take out too soon Cool looking aquarium. Only Anubias plants and Microsorum plants. No, no, that's not true because here we have. Well, there we have some uh, dwarf Sagittaria, and over here we got a crypt plant. That's I didn't plant that plant. It <laughs> Sometimes plants come with other plants. So, oh, we can see a cool little loach over there. Hiding in the grass. I like this tank. Easy to maintain. Just do big water changes and put in whatever you want. They will thrive. Okay, now we have like four aquariums left. Then I've shown you all of my tanks. So maybe I'm gonna show you all of my tanks. <laughs> so after the water change, have some mollies, some sore tails, and super clear water now, as you can see. And what do you know, this tank it's a lot in the video already so but it's a it's a 50 gallon Anubias plant party and of course we have the 75 gallon cube almost three feet tall I've shown you this in a lot of videos lately I think I'm gonna do an all aquarium fish room tour in this video. So this video is going to be long. 
but good. I really like this tank. Always say that about a lot of my tanks, but it's supposed to be like that, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't keep 14. This tank has such a good depth to it, and these Balisneria look awesome. Never seen one. Never seen a person who has a tall cube and has Valisneria from the bottom to the top all around. See that wall? Valisneria. So, one of my favorite tags, the 75 gallon Valisneria cube. And this aquarium also has a huge a huge uh, sump filter in the back. So this tank is 75 gallons and the sump is pretty much 20 gallons. So that's a big sump for that tank. So it's working great. Only would do water changes in here as well. But if I'm gonna do this, because I have a lot of other bits in this that's gonna be too long, so I'm gonna do it, do it a little quick. And if this, if, if this video is the first time you watch of my channel, then first of all, welcome. And then look through my other videos, because usually fish room tour videos gets a lot of views. This is my fancy goldfish tank with the Ryukin Calico, uh, red Ryukin, um, red and white Oranda. Where do we have? We have a red cap Oranda. We also have a lion head, and we have a tricolor Chibunkin and a bunch of different plants but the awesome looking one is the Aponogeton Boivinianus yeah, ask me in the comment section about the plants in each each of my aquariums but otherwise it's gonna take a long time my fancy goldfish cube really like this aquarium as well as my other aquariums till the next aquarium right so this tank was started two days ago still a little bit foggy but it's going well those plants in the back are gonna grow tall and fill in but I want to keep this tank for at least a couple of weeks before I put in the El Plecos. Over here we have my ram's horn snail, giant ram's horn snail breeding tub. We also have a betta. Lives happily with them. A lot of snails. And I feed them turtle food but not for carnivore turtles so it still has a lot of the stuff that uh, this is a sheep food and it still has a lot of the vitamins and minerals in it to help the snails to develop their shells so that's why I keep feeding them turtle food and these snails are plant eaters so really good food to choose when you're gonna breed snails is an aquatic turtle food for red ear sliders and such things because they still need all those vitamins and calcium for their shell and it's a lot cheap it's a lot cheaper than to feed them fish food So, 
this whole thing thing cost me oh nothing I don't remember but so great tip make your water hard and throw in some live plants and feed them turtle food that's the best way then they get calcium on top of calcium on top of hard water and you have them in that and they're gonna breed like crazy last and this time it's actually are also least so I can't say last but not least this is my shrimp tank and it's been going back and forth because get some sunshine from the window that's never a good thing oh, it's too bright I'm gonna lower it down so it looks like it looks like for me yeah for me it looks like this so still having some algae problems from the sunlight hitting the tank but still enjoy this tank just have a small this is an eight gallon, eight gallon tank by the way and I still have uh, <laughs> aqua clear 50 on it because I don't want to do a lot of work with this tank but you can see they are mixed qualities we have some bloody marys some fire reds and some relies and some ordinary sherry sherry swim shrimp Ooh, what happened and yeah some Monte Carlo that I've been trying to grow now for six months <laughs> I think it's been six months so I'm not gonna give up on it because it's still coming from coming right out from some rocks but I don't know I need more fertilization for the water more ferts for the plants doesn't look great but it's nice to come into the kitchen and have a tank in here too and a 30 gallon is easy to keep up with but I will say if you are new to the hobby smaller tanks are harder because the fluctuations of the water tends to um, change a lot even when you get evaporation down to here you have immediately concentrated all the poop and stuff in the tank so it's nice to have a shrimp colony in the kitchen would be awesome to have a whole wall of these ones and have each and each uh, tank with different shrimp but if I'm gonna do that I would like to have an autom automatic water change on them because it's gonna be I don't know why it feels like I wait longer for m between water changes on my small aquariums so I would like to have a automated wood changes drill them in the back something this tank is awesome at least in my opinion take it down to this yeah here we go this is how tar uh, dark the tank is it's not dark because I have two LED lights on it but these colors is what I see see looks a lot cooler should have done that in the beginning 
so this is a black substrate and everything so okay when I press auto focus puts on the lights again so not a perfect tank but I like it till the next bit she is over there and I want to thank Gina Goth or Gina Goth awesome name by the way sounds like a celebrity I want to thank her for having the suggestion Sunshine so I'm gonna call her Miss Sunshine thank you Gina that's a really good suggestion and thank everybody else for great suggestions I just knew that I wanted that I'm gonna read a suggestion and instantly know that that is the name that I want so we'll see if she will eat some giant ram's horn snails these aren't fully grown so they're not giant ones but they're still big and they are rock solid oh. so that's really good for her teeth hopefully she will eat for us today come on and I throw them in and we'll see what she will do and I still have a great algae problem in here as you can see that's gonna take a while so but no problem it's gonna go away I know how don't be worried we'll see if she'll notice them she will, the streamer is off come on, don't be afraid of the camera today I'm gonna throw in a lot so she can't refuse you're gonna hear a crack on this because these are harder than the crayfish even and we're talking raw crayfish so these are hard but she munched on them the other day, come on don't do this to me why do you always do that? you hate the camera, I know so this is what I do when someone asks can we see her eat again? I need to do it five times because four times out of five she refuses to eat in front of the camera then if I go to another room she started to munch out because I can hear her crashing the snails Come on, girl, do this for me. They don't want to see another video. By the way, if she starts eating in this video, that's why you're watching it. So I'm not gonna cheat you or anything. If she doesn't, well, this video isn't in the swim tails. Come on. I know you want them. I know you love them. I'm gonna make her an offer she can't refuse since it, she is behaving bad in front of the camera. Yep, her favorite food, a mystery snail. So if I put this in, she won't refuse. Yep, and I'm gonna put it in. Ah, oh, don't float on me. Of course I got a mystery snail that floats. This is going well. Not. I need you to sink on top of the other ones. Otherwise she's gonna eat you and not eat the other ones anyway. I only have four of these left. I have a bunch of babies but still. These big ones, I need them. She's not gonna eat. Yes.
So if I feed her when I'm just in front of the tank without the tripod and the camera, she eats every time. So it is the camera that she hates or thinks it's someone else or something. Because if a friend comes over or my brother or my mother and wants to see it, she can also refuse food. So <laughs> Puffer Lover knows this, that big puffers can refuse food in front of everybody else but their owner. So they can even dislike people that way. That's why it's so hard to get on film, but now, yes, she's munching down, and that's good for your teeth, Miss Sunshine. There are rock solid, and as you can see, she has no issues chewing them down. I turned the camera off and I moved away and then I slowly walked back and turned the camera off, on again I turned the camera off before, oh, of course so big meal what was that? 10 snails? great and the shells I actually leave them on the, fl on the floor can you say floor? I leave them on the bottom because they're gonna help the crushed coral that I already keep in here to buffer the substrate and we want to keep this puffer on not hard water but harder so crushed coral sand I use it with the turtles because they have the Another good reason to use crushed uh, coral, besides the fact that it raises KH and GH, um, you also use it because it's going to stabilize the pH. So when a tank gets really dirty, the pH is not going to drop. It's going to be stable. So I also use crushed coral with goldfish. So goldfish turtles, this girl, Miss Sunshine, has a lot of it, and I have some in with the guppies actually, but that's not because I had guppies, it's because my yellow labs were growing up in there, and of course I have it in the other tank that you saw, the yellow lab tank with cryptochor or cryptochorine. So crushed coral is great, and of course, my snails, uh, these giant ramsor snails, I had them in a tub, I had them in an aquarium, they laid egg clutches all the time, and they laid them underneath the water, uh, so they are much easier to take care of, but they did not hatch, so I tried crushed coral, and also adding some I don't know what it's called uh, in English, but you know the powder. <laughs> I'm gonna sound stupid now because I have brain fart. But powder you use for reptiles when you put like uh, small bugs and worms and everything, and you shake up the bottle with the white powder, so you get them some vitamins into them. You know what I guys mean. Uh, I used that powder also, put it right straight into the water and then these giant ramsor snails had hard enough water to start to breed the same way but all the babies hatched and could develop a good shell. So, yep, that was a big meal. So why you're seeing my puffer laying around like this most of the time when I do other videos about this tank is because she's full. <laughs> and I want to keep her full at all times because I want to grow the biggest puffer I can grow. So all the way from when I got her in 2016 in August I think she's been getting as much food as I can feed her every day. 
And of course, if she's still lying around like this now when she's this big, I'm not doing that. Uh, put in more food because you need to digest. As bigger as they get, the longer you can wait between meals. That makes sense. So, but from the from uh, when I got her, she was this size, like one of these snails, that small. She has gotten food every day, and usually two times a day when the first six months. So you really need to feed them a lot, a lot. And then you also need to do a lot, a lot of water changers. Wood changing and cleaning. So I'm advertising my puffer, so that's why I want to fill in that you need to think about if you can keep a puffer like this before you buy it. Because like I said, to, uh, it's how long has it been? Oh, my brain is slow today, but 16 months or something and from a fry to a three foot three foot to a puffer that is over a feet long So this one foot puffer was a small fry that was hollow and still ate the body weight their own body weight every day for the first month so a lot of food and of course after a year they need a tank with at least two feet front to back and at least four feet long and at least two feet tall this tank is bigger than that but those measurements that I said now would make a 120 gallon or something so think about that before you buy a puffer. They are awesome, but it's a big investment. And I have an FX6 on here and a big streamer and huge plants. And still her poo made the tank go algae crazy. Even though I do 90% water changes every fifth or sixth day. And I'm also getting another FX6 in the future. I want two filters on Miss Sunshine. So it's a lot of money involved with keeping this puffer. Besides the fact that the food is super expensive all the time and it's gonna get more expensive because she's gonna be a beast. She can be 50% bigger than this. And since I got female I don't know if they get smaller than males, I don't think that they usually do, but I've never seen a fully grown Paka Pupper, not even in YouTube videos, so and I want to be the first one to have a huge Paka Pupper that's super healthy, and I think to get to that huge Paka Pupper you need to start out because they grow more than 50% of their size in the first year from fry so that that first year is really important so enough out of sunshine I saw a plant behind it I need to re plant so till the next bit guys hope you enjoyed Miss Sunshine and her meal of giant ramshorn snails so that was all I had for today, fish lovers, uh, and sack swim tails with all aquarium update in it. And if you like it, please help me and share the video so other, sp other people can see it, so we reach more people. And uh, like the video, it takes a second. If you watch the video more than a second, can you please like it for me, it helps me a lot would be real nice to get a lot of likes on this video took a long time to make it and I make it for you guys for free help me no <laughs> I'm not gonna say that again like it if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it but thanks so much for watching and give me some suggestions what I can keep with the in the new discus tank the 70 gallon if you're coming up I'm not promising that I'm gonna choose something that you 
suggests, but um, I'm I have a few ideas myself, but I'm not 100% uh, sure that I want to keep those fish. So if you come up with something great, I I could maybe do that. So help me with that in the comment section. And as always, fish lovers, see you in the next one. Love that you support me. Never gets old to hear nice words in the comments. Helps the next video come out sooner. So, thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Sex, thanks. Chris, you're coming back.